Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of AP Bassins. I'm here with Kevin Van Dam. He's the pro now. Uh, so I'll show you, that's the 10XD, and there's the 6XD. Just gotta hold them up there a little longer. Oh. I mean, these, look at oh. here. Look at the size difference between those two. The 10XD, it's twice as big. Now this one, this one will run 20 foot. 20 foot? This one will run 25. 25? Though. Easy. And, and that's 12 pound floor or 14 pound floor? Usually I, I like to throw this on 14. It's yeah. such a big bait that you, you got to use a little bigger line with it. Now yeah. this you can go down, you know, I, I'll throw this on 10 at times. Yeah. This doesn't run quite as deep. You know, this one runs deep, but not, not like that. Yep. So this is Kevin Van Dan. That's the two new Strike King crankbaits, or the one new Strike King crankbait that just came out. Thanks very much for doing this. Good luck on the tour this year. So, is there a composite blank made of both graphite and glass? And even though it looks big, it's very light and weight, and it makes it really sensitive. You know, the graphite, I can feel a bait, even on a long cast, I can tell what it's doing, I can feel if it's got little weeds on the hook, I can feel if the bait's hitting the bottom. Even if it's muddy, I can tell what's going on with it because of that graphite. The other aspect is that softer glass that it's blended with, so it allows me a real fast action tip with a lot of backbone, and that gives me the power that I need if I get the bait caught in the grass and I can rip it free and clean that bait so I don't have a wasted cast. The other thing is that glass is so important in a crankbait rod is that when you're cranking and you're hitting the rocks and the stumps and things down there on the bottom, uh, fiberglass unloads a lot slower than graphite. So it allows the bait a much better deflection and it triggers more mass. You know, day in, day out, one of the most important things you can do with a crankbait is make sure that your crankbait that you're using, and that's why I use the setup that I do so I can control that depth. So that I've got a crankbait tied on that's coming to its maximum depth at the depth of the bottom that I'm trying to fish it in. So think about that real close. If you've got a 10 foot drop that you're trying to fish, maybe it's got some scattered grass and rocks on it. If you're throwing a crankbait that runs 20 feet deep, it's diving way down into it. It's overpowering that situation. And what happens is a crankbait like that that's diving, trying to dive 20 feet, when it hits the bottom at 10, it loses a lot of its action and deflection. If I can use a crankbait that runs 11 feet in 10 foot of water, when it's down there hitting the bottom, it's just barely reaching that zone, and every time it hits something and kicks off, it's very lively. It, it has a much better action, and you're gonna trigger a lot more strikes with it. So what I try to do is choose a lure based on the depth zone that I'm fishing with that I can get just deeper than that bottom zone. And you know, with, with one or two rods, it makes it pretty easy to do because there's several things that I can do to help ma manipulate that depth. I can either hold my rod tip up higher, you know, a big seven foot, 10 inch rod like this, if I make a cast out there, put my rod tip down, it don't take long till that bait's down on the bottom. But if I hold my rod tip way up high like this, I can keep that bait up a lot higher in the zone where those bass are at, right? <laughs> he wasn't supposed to bite that quick there. <laughs> I like you for it though, you know. But the rod angle is one way that you can control the depth of your bait. Another thing that you can do is change your line size. Now for all the crankbait fishing that I do, and again, it's really part of the whole system, when I've got this fiberglass composite rod and I match it with fluorocarbon line, and I use Bass Pro's XPS fluorocarbon line, it, it's fluorocarbon is low in stretch, it sinks, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't allow the light to really reflect off it, so in clear water the fish don't see it, and it makes your crankbaits go deeper. So 12-pound fluorocarbon makes your bait run considerably deeper than 12-pound monofilament will, just because of the type, you know, the density of that line. And it's lower in stretch, so it increases your feel. So I'm going to use fluorocarbon line, and I usually have a couple of different rods rigged with different sizes. If I'm fishing shallower, around heavier vegetation, I want to use a heavier, bigger diameter fluorocarbon because it helps me get the bait out of the grass if I get it caught in it. If I'm trying to get a lure to its maximum depth, and in a lot of our lakes, when the water's at its clearest and the bass are their deepest in the summer, we've got lures that'll really reach some incredible depths now. So using a lighter, smaller diameter line with a really deep diving bait will, will, uh, will really help you out. So. Now that I've got my rod, I've got to have a series of lures, and, and um, you know, I use all Strike King crank baits. They have baits that go again from the 1XS that only run a few inches all the way up to uh, the newest, baddest, biggest bait that we just came out with. Um, that I have one, I thought, here in my box, in my bag. 
That's a frog, that's about it. All the way up to this brand new crankbait right here called a 10XD. This one right here will run 25 feet deep. It's a pretty big bait, but if you think about it, the size of that bait is no bigger than most of the bluegills that bass eat. So within the line of Straight King crankbaits, you know, I've got Series 5, a 5XD, a 6XD, all these baits that are designed to run 8, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20 feet deep, all the way to that 25 foot zone. By, by just changing lures, I can cover just about any depth zone that I'm fishing. So when I'm out there and trying to fish the outside edge of that grass, what I try to do is position my boat so that I'm outside the deepest weeds. And I'll watch, you know, I use a Hummingbird uh, 998 depth finder on the bow of my boat. It's got a GPS mapping system, which with the Lake Master map chips, you can follow the contour of, of any lake and see where the depth zone or where the drop off should be follow it on the depth finder and I can stay outside of it with this seven foot 10 inch rod. If I need to get a bait down there 20 feet, I can make a really long cast with this big rod. And you know, I've got a mesh with this new 200X, so it's got a wide spool, so it handles a lot of line. I can make a 60 or 70 yard cast. You just can't believe how far you can throw this bait. And that's half the battle is making a long cast. You keep your bait in the strike zone a lot longer and you're covering a lot more water. So I'll make a real long cast parallel to the outside edge and what I'm trying to do is, is get that bait down to where I'm hitting the, hitting the outside edge of the grass. So I'm going to start my retrieve down when I hit the bottom or hit the first grass I'm going to stop, I'm going to kind of lift it and if nothing happens I'm just going to snap that bait out of the grass and then I'm going to continue that retrieve. And what I want to do is I want my crankbait just hitting the outside edge of that deepest grass through that whole retrieve and that's where those bass set up in the summer. So. As soon as it hits something, I'm going to stop, snap it free. When you rip it free out of the grass like that, that's when a lot of times when a bass is, is going to bite it. This is a, a Strike King 5XD that I've got tied on right here. And this bait will run 15 feet with 10 or 12 pound test floor carbon. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's one of my favorites because a lot of the lakes that we fish, the deepest grass in the lake is only going to run out to you know 12 or 14 feet deep so i can fish this bait right here with a little heavier line which helps me work it through the grass a little bit better and uh and still get down to that zone crankbait fishing is 100 percent about depth control so all i'm doing is using the rod reel line rod positioning and the lure that i've got tied on to make sure that i'm covering the depth zone that i'm trying to fish and as you're out there on a given day, you may not know if the bass are in 10 foot of water, if they're 15 or they're 20. That's why what I do is I have a couple of different rods rigged with different size, uh, you know, baits and lines on there. If you only got one crankbait rod, just put a snap on your crankbait and you can change real quickly. So you can experiment, you can fish that 10, 12 foot zone where the grass is a little bit thicker and you can you know quickly change snap on a different bait and fish that 15 foot uh line right where the grass stops where it's the sparsest and some of these natural lakes now if there's some rock and cover out in front of them you may want to fish some of that with like a 6xd that 20 foot zone beyond that outside edge when i'm fishing in the summer I'm constantly watching that depth finder because I'm, I'm following that grass line, but I'm also really looking for bait fish all the time. I want to look and see where the bait fish are at. Um, if there's a lot of bluegills, a lot of fish on the screen, that tells me there's a lot of activity and, and I'm in the right zone. What I love about this technique is I can cover a lot of water and by working that bait down there, getting it caught in the grass and ripping it free, you're triggering a lot of reaction strikes because that, that crankbait is going to move real erratically when you tear it out of there. It's making some noise. It stops and starts. One of the worst things you can do as a bass angler is take a lure and just cast it out there with a straight retrieve and don't stop it, don't start it, don't let it hit the bottom, don't do anything. Uh, you want your bait hitting the bottom. If you're fishing in a zone where you can't get it to hit the bottom, and I'll do this in super clear conditions. You know, if you're fishing on Lake Michigan, for instance, for smallmouth, a lot of times we'll take that crankbait in real clear water, and even though I know the bass might be 25, 30 foot deep, I'll throw a bait like this and I'll burn it down and stop it and start it. It's not hitting the bottom, but it's moving real erratically. And just because I can get it down close to the zone where the fish are at, I can catch them with it. But day in, day out, the number one thing is to make sure that you can get that bait down in the grass. So again, we've got baits to cover all those zones just for that. The second th area that, uh, that, I, that I love to fish a lot is where the grass is a little bit thicker. You know, up on the flats, a lot of times you'll fish 
where the grass may be just underneath the surface or you'll see patches of it coming to the top. And those bass like those areas where there's more vegetation than that. And you can throw a lot of different lures. Um, you know, you can fish, you know, spinner baits, you can fish plastics, but uh, I've had a lot of success fishing square bell crankbaits, and that's exactly what I did in, in New Orleans to win the classic uh, two years ago, was fish the, the little KBD square bill, 1.5, and, and again, it comes in different sizes too. But the unique thing about this crankbait over other baits is the action that it has even on a straight retrieve. And this is, this is a situation where when you got, you know, milfoil, coontail, things like that in the lake, you know that crankbait, it's got two treble hooks, you know that crankbait is gonna get buried, it's gonna hit, get in the grass. It's not designed for that. But with that square bill design and the way this lure uh, is balanced, when you just reel it on a straight retrieve, uh, I got a knot tied on there. When you just reel this on a straight retrieve, this bait doesn't just come in uh, in a straight line back to the boat. It actually wanders back and forth to the right and left. Let's see if I can get this extra line on. Go. And that erratic action is what uh, the bass really will really go after. So I'll take this little square bill like this, and it's designed only to run four or five feet. And same thing, I use it with the same composite rod. I like to use a little bit shorter rod for this that has a little more uh, uh, shorter handle to it because I'm gonna be snapping it and ripping it all the time. If you watched the Bassmasters Classic in New Orleans two years ago, you'll see not just me, but all the guys that were out there because we were all fishing right around each other and it didn't take long for all my buddies, all my competitors. Once they saw they, you know, that I was catching with a crankbait, everybody switched to one. We're reeling that crankbait down and we're, I mean, we're popping it like that, trying to get that bait out of the grass. And that's what you have to do. With a rod like this, you have a lot of power. So if you got a situation where the grass is a little thicker, this square bell crankbait has tremendous action that just hunts around and it never goes the same place twice. And I'm gonna choose a color for all these situations that's natural for the forage. You know, down there, the water was real dirty. You couldn't see down six or eight inches. I was using a black and chartreuse, just the most visible color that I could. In our clear lakes, you wanna use something that's natural. And most of the bass feed on bluegill. So I use a lot of bluegill patterns, a lot of uh, natural looking bait fish patterns, things like that, and clear water like this. But I'm gonna reel that thing down, get it down into that zone, stop it, start it. So when I hit the grass, same thing, just pop that bait real quick and start that retrieve again. And you can, you can catch a lot of fish with it. These crankbaits right here, uh, on a lot of the natural lakes in this area, it's one of my best baits to use because it's not near as flashy as a spinner bait. It's, it doesn't have the vibration, doesn't have the sound. And most of the time I'm using one like this right here that does not have any rattling at all. This bait has no rattle. We actually make it both ways, rattling and non-rattling. And on, um, on any given day, you know, one can outproduce the other. So I pay real close attention to how the fish are, uh, are reacting to my bait or if they're not at all. And, you know, I'll go from one to the other. I've seen that make such a huge difference. You know, I've had tournaments before where I'll pull up on a ledge and throw a deep diving crankbait out there and catch them every cast. You catch 15 or 20 fish and then it just slows down. You hardly catch any anymore. And I was using a rattling bait and I can pick up the same exact color, same exact lure, but in a silent model, make the same cast and the very first time go again and catch 10 or 15 in a row. That, so the sound really can make a very big difference. And, and if I've got, you know, a lot of vegetation, there's some color in the water, things like that, where, you know, I need, I need a bait that's easier for the fish to find, a rattling lure, in most cases, is gonna be better. And that's, that's what I like to start with. But if you got crystal clear water like this, um, and fish that, you know, are getting a lot of pressure, there's a lot of other anglers around, a silent crankbait is usually what I start with because it's just a whole different action, it's a lot subtler, and those fish uh, will react to it a whole lot, a whole lot better. So, I love to throw crankbaits, and again, the biggest thing is making sure that you've got a bait and a rod reel combination that fits the depth zone that you're trying to cover. And, uh, you know, in clear water like this, if you match it with a natural pattern that has, uh, 
you know, that, that has that real look, lifelike look to what the fish are feeding on, it makes them a lot easier to, to trigger into biting that particular